Governor Sarah Palin, thank you so much for being with us on your show. I am honored to be here. Thank you. Governor, our first question comes from Monica. Um, is, I'm sure it's one that you've gotten regularly, especially since you were named to the ticket. But talk about if you feel you're ready mm. for this position. I absolutely do. Otherwise, I would never have said yes to this opportunity and this responsibility that I have running with John McCain. Not only my executive experience coming from a mayor and manager position in a city, but uh, as a small business owner and a regulator of oil and gas, and then as a governor of an energy producing state. That executive experience is, in fact, it's more executive experience than Barack Obama has. But you combine that with a worldview that I share with John McCain, the understanding of the team effort that we must take to put America back on the right track, to put our economy back on the right track by reining in government growth and allowing tax cuts so our small businesses especially can hire more people. That's how jobs are created. That's how we get the economy back on track. And then our commitment also that we share to getting our country firmly on a path towards energy independence. You combine that worldview with the experience, and absolutely I feel that I'm ready. Rob from Evergreen wants to know, are you surprised with the intensity that some have gone after you? Oh, I guess I shouldn't be surprised because I, I am certainly coming from that Washington outsider position. I think that's good, though. It's, it's. I think it should be seen as, as refreshing and real. Um, of what I represent is what um, I think working class, hardworking American families represent, and and that is a desire for opportunity, for a good job in our own hometown, not government being the be all end all solution to the challenges that we're facing and family values, those things that uh, I think are very important and are, are shared with um, the majority of Americans. Uh, so maybe I'm, I'm not surprised by the shots that we take because I come from that outsider position, but I think it's, it's going to be good for Washington, D.C. is to have that outsider there, that reformer. I'm glad you brought up the economy and, and help because we took a lot of emails from folks here in Colorado who may be struggling. Brandon Purcell is one of them. He said he's out of work three months, uh, little light at the end of the tunnel. He's too well off for government assistance. The savings account is almost tapped out. He's kind of in between right now, campaigns, and he wants to know why should he put his trust in his vote in you? Because we're going to create jobs, and voters will have that very clear choice between the two tickets to support a ticket, ours, that supports policies to reduce taxes, allow our small businesses to keep more of what they produce and earn so that they can hire more people. That's how he's going to get that shot at getting another job, a better job, versus the other ticket that wants to take more money from our individuals and our small businesses and then redistribute that money, that, that wealth, according to a politician's priorities. That was Barack Obama's answer to Joe the Plumber the other night was he wants to take more of his money and give it to other people according to his priorities. And Joe the Plumber said, mm, that a, sounds a little bit like socialism to him. I took a question from Frances Owens, the former, former First Lady here of Colorado, who is a big supporter of your ticket. Um, she is, despite she writes being a fiscally conservative Republican, supporting a measure here in Colorado um, to end a decades-long wait list for 12,000 people with Down syndrome, autism, mental retardation, it is through a tax increase of two cents on every ten dollars. She's curious to know, she doesn't feel there's an alternative way to solve the problem of this magnitude. Do you oppose it, given your position on taxes, or do you support it, given your commitment to kids and adults with special There's needs? There's got to be an alternative to raising taxes. It's a matter of prioritizing the dollars that are already there in government. What I did as governor of the state of Alaska was prioritize for a, a great increase in funding for our students with special needs up there, and I think that Colorado can do that also. And that is an issue near and dear to my heart. My nephew with autism, my son with Down syndrome, I'm going to make sure that on a national level, too, that we prioritize to meet the needs of these special needs children, and the families will know that they have a friend and an advocate in the White House. doesn't necessarily mean increasing taxes to meet those needs. It's all a matter of prioritizing, and when we deal with these families and our children with special needs, as they get to see more and more that good heart of America, I think that they will see some manifestation of that with priorities and budgets going to help them meet their needs. Senator McCain's talked a lot about reaching across the aisle. Um, Paul Hawkins writes in saying, what Democrats do you feel would be a good fit for a McCain-Palin administration and why? Lieberman, he is so great. He is so independent.
independent. Reminds me a lot of John McCain also. That independent spirit that is within them, they do not let obsessive partisanship get in the way of just doing what's right for the people they're serving. And as governor, look at my cabinet. I've got uh, Republicans. I've got uh, a Democrat who is our commissioner of revenue. I have hired Democrats, independents, Republicans to best serve us as a team up there in Alaska. And um, on a national level, we would do the same thing. Looking for people who have the heart of America in mind, have a servant's heart, and have strong work ethic and good judgment, good value, so that they can best be implemented to put government back on the side of the people of America. I remember when you were in Colorado last, you talked about how one of your priorities if elected vice president would be to talk about energy. Yes. Um, one of the big issues here, energy, is oil shale. And Lonnie Chandler from Westminster wants to know, why isn't there more comment about oil shale as an energy alternative? Well, oil shale, of course, the extraction it really sucks up literally a lot of resources, including water. It, it's a state's issue, though. If, if Colorado residents want to see that oil shale extraction be allowed and maybe even be incentivized, then they need to work with their legislature and their governor to see that happen. But nationally, we do need an all-of-the-above approach where we'll tap into the conventional sources of energy that we have with our oil and our natural gas and our coal. In addition, though, to tapping into the alternative the fuels that are there also. You know, this area is, is so blessed with the potential there for alternative with um, with the winds and, and with solar also and in other parts of this land with geothermal and, and with the biomass. We've got to tap into those. It, it's nonsense that we are so reliant on foreign sources of energy as, as we circulate hundreds of billions of dollars into other countries. Some countries that do not like America very much, and we're creating jobs over there. Those jobs should be here. Those dollars circulated here. Alternative and conventional sources tapped into. Here's an opportunity for a couple of quick questions. Uh, Stacy Childerson writes and wants to know, do you think there's such a thing as clean coal? She doesn't believe yeah. it actually exists. Yeah, absolutely. We need to develop that clean coal technology. I know that Joe Biden has told the voter that, no, there is no such thing. We don't support clean coal. No, call him on that. Absolutely, that technology needs to be found. And it, Biden has said, too, that in an, an Obama administration, even if there is clean coal technology, we won't use that here in America. They can use it over in China, but we wouldn't use it here. Nonsense. Let's develop that here. Let's sell that technology to other countries also. Those countries that um, certainly don't adhere to the stringent requirements that we adhere to to make sure that uh, the, our environment's stays clean and our waters are clean, our air is clean. We need to develop that and in a McCain administration, that's going to be one of our top agenda items too, is clean coal technology. Finally, Governor, we've been trying to engage some local grade schoolers the last few elections. We do a feature called Questions from the Third Grade. My name is Brandon Garcia. What does the Vice President do? Uh, that's something that Piper would ask me as a second grader also. Uh, that's a great question, Brandon, and a vice president has a really great job because not only are they there to support the president's agenda, they're like the team member, the teammate to that president, but also they're in charge of the United States Senate. So if they want to, they can really get in there with the senators and make a lot of good policy changes that will make life better for Brandon and his family and his classroom, and it's a great job, and I look forward to having that job. Governor Sarah Palin, thank you so much for being on your show. Thank you so much. Appreciate you.